Hello, everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel, and we're doing a commodity uh, corner today with Greg Fenton, who runs a company called Zentech, Zentech, uh, which trades on the Toronto Exchange, but it's also been approved for a listing on NASDAQ. It works in the graphene space, and we will get into that as the discussion arises. But this morning, Greg, I saw this uh, press release that came out from your company. You have developed a product that is what they call ice phobic, as in you, you put it on something and it sheds ice. Tell us about it. I love the press release. Uh, it's a great development. What's going on? Thanks, Byron. Uh, nice to be with you this morning. Yeah, we're uh, very, very excited about this, uh, this product that we've developed. It's been something that we've worked on for about uh, a year and a half now. And uh, it, it's, it's a coating that we can actually put onto surfaces that doesn't allow ice to accrete uh, to the same extent as it would on normal surfaces, like mm -hmm. a metal or, or, or uh, you know, a, a, a other surfaces. And basically what it does is very unique formulation that we've uh, added different types of graphene to. Um, the, the ice doesn't accrete to the surface nearly as well as it, it usually would. So as soon as any force or pressure is put on the surface of the ice, it actually sheds. Okay, and now, if you now think about... Oh, I was going to say, so well, your press release was talking about its applications in aviation, for example, and I think everybody kind of understands you've been on an airplane and you have to taxi out in the winter and they, they you know, the airport, they spray the airplane with this goop because, you know, there's ice or whatever on the wing. But if you put a different kind of paint, for example, on an aircraft uh, or, or a propeller blade, or, or the, you're saying that this ice phobic material will, you know, maybe not prevent the ice from but at least it'll shed easier. Is that what, is that what's going That's on? That's exactly it, Byron. So this would be a permanent coating on a surface. Mm -hmm. So the ice can still form to, but as soon as any pressure at all hits the mm -hmm. surface of it and it's measured in kilopascals and we've got it down under 20 kilopascals mm -hmm. that actually requires, that, that, that that's required to ha have the ice shed. So if you think about a wing as it's, as it's moving through the air, the ice won't be able to accrete to the wing. So it's significant for airplanes, obviously the fluid they put on airplanes now, it's, it's a chemical, it's hazardous, it's expensive, it costs time. This would be a coating that would be on there and be permanent. So not only for airplanes, for drones, for power lines, for uh, wind generation propellers, we saw what happened in Texas last year where they had right. massive outages because of ice. So these are significant markets across the globe for us that we'll be targeting. That was sort of my next question. We saw last year that the windmills in Texas, they iced up and because of the weight of the ice, the wind you know, couldn't blow. But you're saying that the, 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 just because of the, the nature of this material, this new sort of a, 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 slip, a slip free paint or whatever that would shed the ice, that the ice would fall off the, the blades of that windmill and it would either be easier to de-ice them or they wouldn't ice up in the first place. That's right. If, as long as the wind, the, the, the blade is turning, there would be enough force exerted against the blade itself to actually cause the ice to shed. It, obviously, if the, if, if the windmill was sitting still and the ice was falling on it, it would still accrete to it. But as soon as that started to move, the ice would just fly off so you wouldn't have these outages. So you've been working on this R&D project, you said, for about 18 months. And so where does it go from here? Are there other trials and tests or, you know, the kind of public uh, certifications it has to get? Or can you, is it a marketable idea right now? What? That's a great, great question, Byron. Yeah, we're in the final stage of testing right now. So we've done some initial UV testing. So we simulated two years worth of UV exposure mm -hmm. and it retained its isophobic properties. Right now, we're testing it for uh, rain and sand erosion as well, and that's really the last step. Mm -hmm. uh, we do anticipate good results there as well, but those should uh, th those results will be coming in in the next little bit here. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we, this is a product that we can take to market. Mm -hmm. This is not this is unoptimized as well, and I want to make that point: is this is you know the, the the first couple of trials that we did with different forms of graphene, and we got it to this standard that's never been hit before. And we can still improve it further, but we have a product that will be the best in market as we stand now. So we're, we're very, very confident that we should be able to get something into the market later this year. 
Well, and, and these are just sort of the ideas that you've worked on because I, I, I suppose if, if this tech is like many other things, other people out there in completely different parts of the universe will look at this and say, hey, wow, this is really cool. You know, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get some of that, uh, uh, you know, graphene material that you've got, or, you know, let me, let me get a license from you or whatever. So, so this thing could really roll, huh? That's our business model, Byron, is we're an intellectual property development company. So we'll develop the IP mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to license it out to third parties to actually take it into the marketplace. Yeah, as in you don't have to set up a factory to make your own buckets of paint. You just license it to people who already have a factory that makes this special paint with this particular additive. Is that it? Is that the idea? That's right. And then we'll earn a royalty off that. So it's the best of all worlds. We don't have to have a, a huge build out or CapEx spend and we'll be able to collect the royalties from sales of this product in the marketplace. Well, we have limited time and I think this is a really good you know, point to kind of bring it to a close. Uh, tell investors out there, how, they sh how, can, how can they buy your stock? Where, where, you know, what, what should they look for? And, and where, where do you, you know, what, what should they be doing in terms of running out and buying shares? Well, look, our, our, uh, our stock currently trades on the TSXV and in the over-the-counter market in the U.S. Uh, we announced last week that uh, we're moving to the NASDAQ, um, and that is imminent. Um, so we'll be able to buy it there as well. Um, we have a number of exciting projects that we, uh, one that's uh, already being commercialized as we speak, that's our Zengar coating. We've got our isophobic coatings. Mm -hmm. We have at least uh, half a dozen other IP that uh, are very close to commercialization as well. So I think it's a great time from an investment perspective. Our stock has come off in the last little while due to the overall market. So I think uh, it's a great entry point for investors that are interested in uh, the high tech space. Yeah. Well, you know, as an as an outsider to the company looking in, I mean, we have no. I, I don't. I'm not on your board or anything else. But you know, uh, you, you're moving to the Nasdaq would tend to be a, a larger, you know, share share buyer audience, and so this could be a really great entry point, as you said, for people who want to get in now. You know, before the Nasdaq uh, trip happens. Uh, with that, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your information. I wish you well, you and the you and the team at at, at Zentech and in everything you're doing uh, out there in uh, investor land. If you, if you don't get graphene, you better read up on it. It's really astonishing stuff. It's just, a, it's the, it's a material of the future. One of those miracle materials that's going to change the world as we know it. And with that, Greg, thank you. And to all investors out there, I wish you the best of uh, luck in all of your investing and uh, good health. Thank you.